August 21st, 2017, and an eclipse, a solar eclipse, of which the world has not seen its totality across such a wide swath of North America in almost 100 years, or more than 100 years, is now occurring this afternoon, as a matter of fact, in about an hour. Um, I'm in Bushkill Falls. We won't be able to see the entire totality of the eclipse, but it's still cool either way. And I was wondering, what can we learn from the Torah in regards to solar eclipses? What message are we supposed to take away from this natural phenomenon? What do our Chachamim say about it? So different Chachamim in Mesech Sukkah interpret a solar eclipse in a very negative way. A siman ra, a bad sign for Klal Yisrael. And then there are other Chachamim that say it's a bad sign for our enemies. But ultimately, we know what a solar eclipse is, right? A solar eclipse is just when the moon passes between the Earth and the Sun and causes its big shadow to fall down on us. So how do we resolve what we understand physically what a solar eclipse is with what the Gemara is saying? We see this a lot. We see how certain natural phenomenon are described to be a certain heavenly sign. But now in today's day and age of science, we understand exactly what these phenomenon are. So how do we balance between the two? How do we make sense of what our Chachamim are telling us and what science tells us? So there are many different approaches that one could take to try to understand how to balance between our words of Chazal and the words of science. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to focus particularly on the Ramah because what he says really strikes home with how I personally view the world. The Ramah says that when we read Gemaras like Sukkah that talk about the Simon Ra of a solar eclipse, or we look at other areas in Shas where they explain natural phenomenon to be caused by spiritual reasons, so in reality, there are two different types of causes. There's a physical cause, and then there's a spiritual cause. We take the laws of nature as being laws that have to happen because that's the way this world is. But what we forget is that there is another force, a force that cannot be perceived by our five senses, a force that goes beyond our understanding, and that is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So while we here in this world, we see the physical causes for things, we can't forget that there are spiritual causes as well. As we're going into Rosh Hashanah, I always get into this mindset because people start davening more. They start pouring their hearts out more to HaKadosh Baruch Hu saying, please bless me with good health and wealth. But if we have bitachon, that our words somehow by being vibrated by our larynx are going to go to some heavenly father and we believe in tefillah, then at the same time, it's not that big of a stretch to believe that there are spiritual causes for natural phenomenon. We believe in the koach of prayer. We believe in the koach of good deeds. We believe that our actions have a spiritual element. And so, too, there's a spiritual element that causes the natural phenomenon that we see in this beautiful world. It's, it's the realization that there are these two worlds that everyone has to try to, to reach on a real level to try to make that real connection that although I'm in this world, I'm sensitive enough to be careful about my actions because I believe in the next world as well. So when I'm going into Rosh Hashanah and I'm buying my seats and I'm gonna start davening, there really needs to be that betachon, there needs to be that connection that what I'm doing, the tzedakah I'm giving, the prayers that I'm saying are going to be heard. Anyway, um, that was the solar eclipse of August 2017. Uh, my family and I are about to leave the Airbnb that we were staying at. Baruch Hashem, we were able to take a break. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you next time. Be'ezras Hashem.